Welcome back. I'm going to do a one year uh, update um, post aortic valve surgery and aneurysm uh, repair. Um, it's actually one year and two days past. Um, didn't really have time on the actual anniversary and then yesterday was a little bit busy too. So this is one year and two days uh, since my aortic valve surgery um, and where I was fitted with a new onyx uh, aortic valve uh, and then also had the bentol procedure so my aneurysm was repaired. I'll give, I've got a lot of other videos you can go back and watch but I'm just going to try to give a little bit of a recap. This will probably be a long video um, because I'll ramble. I've got some notes just to try to make sure I go over some things um, but, but I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. But just as a recap, um, so when I was 18 years old, uh, and I did a routine physical. The nurse uh, that did the physical noticed a heart murmur. And it was the first time that um, that had been noticed, to my knowledge, uh, um, leading up to then. Uh, I was sent to a cardiologist. At that point, they basically had discovered, after they did some tests and a TE and those kind of things, um, that I had a bicuspid aortic valve. At that point, um, the cardiologist said, you know, we're going to monitor this. We're going to, you know, do yearly echoes. We're going to put you on some blood pressure medicine to, to help, you know, prolong this um, and just continue to monitor you. But by the time you're 40, you'll probably have to have this, uh, you know, fixed, whether replaced or whatever. Um, and so I started taking medication and going to the cardiologist once a year and never really thought about it. Um, it never really changed the way I did anything. Um, knew it was there, knew that was coming, um, but just continued to monitor and follow through. And basically from when I was 18 to when I was uh, in my mid 30s, so a few years ago, uh, my cardiologist at the time said, hey, you know, have you have you talked to a surgeon because we're, we're looking as this aneurysm starting to grow and you're, and you're getting a little bit more dilation there in the root, um, that this will probably have to be soon. And again, I didn't really do anything about it because I was like, no, I'm fine, everything's good. Um, I was exercising, I was felt pretty good about everything. Um, and so I just continued to do those um, yearly echoes and, and checkups. And then early last year, I had my yearly appointment. And basically at that point, the echo showed that my um, aortic root, the, the dilation had gotten to close to five uh, centimeters, which is basically the, the threshold that I was told, hey, this is when we're, we're looking at uh, doing a replacement. Uh, thankfully, my ejection fraction always stayed between 55 and 60 percent, so it was never really an issue there. Um, but I noticed I'd started to get a little bit more tired um, and didn't quite have the same um, stamina when I was exercising. For example, running, I could, uh, you know, if I was even up until December of the of, of the year before, I was able to go and, and, and run for an hour straight, you know, run a six mile, you know, just kind of good paced hour uh, and was fine. And then at the beginning of the year last year, I noticed even 30 minutes started to get a little bit more difficult for me to do. I thought I was just getting a little bit out of shape, but um, apparently all this obviously lines up and, and, and as that uh, dilation was getting bigger and just kind of losing some of that functionality, that's where I, you know, kind of was at the beginning of the year. So I met with the surgeon uh, initially, um, that was kind of connected to my cardiologist and didn't really like what he said, but he said, yeah, absolutely. It's time to, to, you know, make this change and, and we'll go with the mechanical valve. And so at that point I started doing a little bit of research. Um, and I, I was recommended a, a surgeon, um, not far from me in Atlanta that, um, you know, had done thousands of these procedures. And so I got an appointment set up with him, uh, in, in the beginning of May of last year, uh, to meet and kind of get his take on everything. So um, I actually had a um, an appointment with him. He looked at my test. I, I just had a, a CT scan done as well as the, the echo and said, yeah, this is definitely t the time to do it so that, um, you know, it, it could be good for another couple years, but, you know, with an aneurysm growing, you, you, there's always a concern there. But but the, the idea was, hey, go and get it fixed while you're still feeling well and it, and it it's showing signs that it needs to be uh, addressed soon. So that way you don't have a dip in, in how you feel and have, have to have that recovery. And so 
Um, you know, I really like what, you know, he, the way his approach was and, and what he was saying. And so uh, we booked the surgery then in May for July 14th uh, of last year. And in between those times, I did a lot of research. Um, I found the heartvalvesurgery.com and read some forums there and, and, and watched a lot of videos on YouTube to understand what was coming with surgery, what the valve options were, because the surgeon, the cardiologist, everybody said, hey, it's your age, we're gonna recommend uh, the mechanical valve for a couple reasons, um, and I won't go too much into that, but that's what I chose, I, I felt that was best for me, and so I went with the Onyx valve, and it just so happened, uh, you know, a friend of mine actually works for Artivion, who now is the, the maker of the Onyx valve, um, so I got a chance to go down and actually watch um, some some surgeons who are in, in, in med school go through and get trained on doing the valve replacement surgery uh, and, and inserting the onyx valve, which was a very cool experience. I got a chance to talk to a lot of people, understand the, the dynamics and everything of the, the valve, probably more so than, than a lot of people, but that's just kind of how I like to do it. I, I learn as much as possible. Um, and so, you know, felt very confident with that. Knew going in, this is what I wanted to do. Um, again, pointing out that we needed to have the, the Bentall procedure, which is to replace that uh, aneurysm as well. So I actually got to see, again, uh, some surgeons being kind of trained on how to do that and to, uh, you know, not only insert the, the valve piece of it, um, but also to take the coronary arteries off of the native tissue and, and put them into this Dacron sleeve that is now my ascending aorta. And again, very cool. I, I, you know, for somebody like me, this was this was great to hear all these stories, to read all these things, to have this kind of firsthand knowledge. Um, I, I would say it could have maybe given me a, a, a couple of things that maybe were a disappointment later because anytime you do a lot of this research, you hear a lot of the great things and you try to focus on those, and that's what I did. Um, and so maybe I missed some of the things that may have been disappointing to me over the past year that wouldn't have been if I hadn't done the research. But that's that's me, uh, nothing, you know, wouldn't go back and change any of that at all. But again, so I chose that valve, felt very good about it. And um, so the week before, uh, so July 7th, so a week before my surgery, went in to do pre-testing, which was a, uh, a full CT scan and blood work and all those things. Um, I did not have to do anything else other than those tests, and it basically showed there's no blockages, no no need for any other kind of bypass while they're in there. And so um, at that point, you know, we, we showed up the morning of, and you can go back and watch my videos to, to see the more, uh, the closer videos to that to see how I was really feeling and, and what I was saying. But showed up the morning of the 14th, uh, last July, and, um, you know, got checked in. Around 5 a.m., we got there early. My surgery was the first of the day, which I would recommend because that was great to be able to get up, go, and, and kind of jump in and, and get it going because I guess like anything later in the day, if there's complications or anything else pops up during early surgeries, it pushes the time back, and so um, I was thankful to have that. Um, so it was also a Friday morning, which I had heard a little bit of different opinions about, hey, if you do it on a Friday morning and you know, maybe the weekend shift at the hospital may not be the best um, nurses versus early week. But again, I felt like Friday was the best for me. And, and again, I wouldn't go back and change that. Um, so surgery, um, again, you can go back and watch my videos because I'm not going to remember all this. Uh, but I, I remember being rolled into the, the operating room at like 7.03, I believe is what it was, a.m. And um, you know, got a chance to be introduced to everybody on the team there, which they were all fantastic. Um, and then I remember the anesthesiologist telling me, all right, you're going to, you're probably going to feel a little bit sleepy. And then I was completely out. And so, um, during my surgery, um, there were some complications, um, nothing, nothing major, thankfully, but I, I did bleed a little bit more than they expected. So I did have to have, um, uh, a kind of a transfusion during that time. Uh, which then also made my surgery go from what they were estimating three and a half to four hours to more like five, five and a half hours. And so I was in the operating room from seven to a little bit after 1 p.m., which I guess would be closer to six hours, just depending on how you look at uh, the timing and start and that kind of thing. Um, but again, 
I didn't, I didn't know anything until I started waking up in, in the ICU. Um, you can go back and watch my video. When I talk about the breathing tube. It was not comfortable for me. Um, but I also kind of woke up and was fighting uh, a little bit just overall. And I think that's maybe sometimes happens with different people and the way they react to medicine. The anesthesiologist said that it could, you know, sometimes this happens to people. But anyway, I woke up a little bit feisty, I guess you'd say. And so uh, once I was able to calm down, they removed the tube and, you know, then I began to stay. So I stayed one night in the ICU. Um, had a lot of pain and a lot of things um, that I w really wasn't expecting. Um, you know, I, I was kind of expecting more pain in my chest, and I didn't really have that, but it was pain in the shoulders and, and mid to upper back, and, and maybe it's just because I didn't really, you know, listen to people telling me that would be a problem. But the other, the other part I had pain in, which really lasted me for over a week, uh, was basically in my lower back and top of my my butt, the muscles across there were, were just extremely tight and knotted up for, for the whole week I was in the hospital. And that was, that was honestly very painful. Um, but again, that was something I didn't necessarily know was going to come and, and, and did. Um, you know, the other piece of it is a lot of people I've talked to that have had this and typically, typically in a perfect world, um, that surgery on Friday morning, I probably could have gone home on Tuesday morning. But because I'd lost a lot of blood and had to have uh, the transfusion, they wanted to keep me in to make sure everything was stable. Um, I had a fever for the first few days, and, and that's probably because of that transfusion, just my body trying to figure out what was going on. Um, and then it, it took a few days to get my INR where they wanted it. That I, they started me off with, um, with one milligram of, of warfarin, um, and you know, it takes a couple days for that to really get into your system, and it just really wasn't moving my INR at all. So finally by Friday, um, so a week later, um, I was discharged, my INR was going up, and then I was to go on Monday uh, following to, to make sure it was in range. I'll kind of save you from there on. Um, you know, you can go back and watch. Recovery was ups and downs early on. Um, I did a lot of walking, and, uh, and, and you know, once we got my INR in range, everything was good there. So um, again, lots of walking early on. And then as we kind of progressed afterwards, um, I had an issue with um, my cardiologist's office and the whole uh, medical group being bought out by another medical group. And, and really the care just went really far down. So much so that um, I saw my, my cardiologist two times um, within a couple months after my surgery. And he both times asked me what I was there for and was surprised to hear that I'd had the surgery, even though he had recommended it and we had, had gone through that. So I was able to change doctors, um, did cardiac rehab. That was a great experience for me. I would, I would highly recommend it for anybody that goes through this just for the peace of mind. But I did a lot, I had learned a lot there. The nurses were fantastic. Um, but basically in a nutshell, those first probably three months afterwards, while they were tough getting, getting going, once I started moving, more and more, um, I was feeling great. I had a lot more energy. I, I really could feel that after a, you know a couple months of, of rehabbing, um, I was doing rehab. I was walking a lot. I was I was starting back to run and do some weights and those types of things. And then um, one Sunday in October, so you know, again a couple months after after the surgery, uh, my wife and I were walking, and I just felt very flushed and like I was going to black out and, and just, I couldn't, I was dizzy. Couldn't, couldn't stand. Uh, I had a friend who's a, uh, a nurse come, um, and you know, he kind of checked me over and said, everything looks good. So at that point we were thinking maybe it was, um, blood sugar. So went to a new doctor, a uh, new cardiologist, which has been great. Um, they, just so personable and, and answers a lot of questions and it's so quick to respond. Um, basically, um, you know, we tried a, a few different things. Um, you know, I wore a Holter, mo a Holter monitor for a couple weeks. At one point, didn't really show anything. Um, you know, all my monitors in um, the cardiac rehab really weren't showing anything. But I started having that that feeling that Sunday, and then a few days later, I was um, at my office an hour from home and just got finished you know, on the treadmill for 30 minutes and was driving to lunch and 
I just blacked out real quickly and my heart started racing. And again, at that point, we we're still thinking it could have been blood sugar. So we're doing all sorts of stuff there. I was, I was trying to eat you know, plenty of food just to make sure because I was thinking as my body's healing, it's probably burning more, those types of things. Um, but it would still continue to happen. Uh, I went to my um, primary care doctor. We checked blood sugar. We ran tests. Everything looked good and just really couldn't figure things out. And so probably half a dozen or more times I would get dizzy. I would feel this kind of flushed feeling and then sometimes I would just black out uh, really quickly and then come back to that my heart would be racing. Nothing crazy, maybe 100, 130, 140 beats a minute. So it wasn't anything really high. Um, you know, as far as that goes, as it could have been, but we really weren't sure what, what it was. And so I had another appointment with my car, my new cardiologist in December was telling him all about this. And he said, Hey, let's, let's put you on another monitor and, and wear it for a week. Um, and then we'll, we'll see what it does. See if we can rule out anything because, uh, my echo looked great. Um, you can go back and see a picture of that. I think at my three or four month, um, video, uh, everything sounded great. So I was like, okay, let's wear the monitor. Um, and this one actually had the button where you can record if there was a, a time that was a little bit odd. So, you know, pretty much the week felt pretty good until I was heading to, to rehab one morning and I was, I was driving and again, it blacked out. I pulled over thankfully, cause I was on a, uh, a side street, um, caught my breath, um, you know, pushed the button to record it. Uh, my wife was thankfully right behind me driving the kids to go somewhere else. Um, so she was able to pull over. Long story short, got rehab. I sat, was monitored there for an hour. Uh, didn't do any exercise, but just sat and, and nothing really showed. So still couldn't figure it out. Um, you know, set that, the monitor back in. And basically what, we, what it uncovered was when I was having those episodes, I was having uh, VTAC. Um, and some of those episodes, the one that, that was recorded when I was driving, when I was wearing it, lasted 19 seconds, uh, which I never really dug into, but apparently that's that's not good. Um, but that's what the cardiologist is like, this is what's causing it. He looked through the monitor and said, I'm, I'm sure this is what where you're having the issue. So at that point, uh, he prescribed me metoprolol. So I had not been on a beta blocker because when my after I had the surgery throughout that whole week in the hospital, my they were even concerned I might have had a little bit of a heart block, but my rhythm and everything was great. Um, and so there was no real thought that I needed to be on a beta blocker. Um, so they put me on that in December um, and I didn't really know what to expect. I'd heard different things about it, but uh, almost immediately within a couple of days, and, and this is where, I don't know, you may be watching and think, wow, this is, you know, this is my experience. So. But within a couple of days of, of taking that, I started having uh, pain in my chest um, across here, up through my shoulder and on my side. And, you know, that was a very uncomfortable feeling. My, my, my heart rate was great. And, you know, I didn't feel uh, that flush feeling or anything like that or didn't have those blackout episodes, but I was having pain. Um, and um, long story short, basically what we've, my primary care figured out it, it, it was some nerves that were kind of growing back. I was having some nerve issues. Um, but here we are um, six months, seven months after that, and I still kind of have that pain. And so when I talked to my cardiologist at my one year checkup, um, I had said, I thought I'd read that um, a beta blocker could cause some of that pain. And he said, it's very rare, but it could. And so I think that could be what's happened to me. I don't know. I'm not a medical expert. Um, so, at this point, I still do have some soreness and I've had it really since December, so almost seven months. And that's a little frustrating um, and a little disappointing. But even if it is from the beta blocker, it's much better to have that than to have those episodes of VTAC when I was, I was blacking out. The other thing that that was doing to me last year was, was causing tremendous anxiety. Um, and I've never had, had any kind of anxiety in my life. Um, but I was having full blown panic attacks and, and just, I would wake up in the middle of the night, couldn't go back to sleep. And I would, I would just feel this, this pressure, um, you know, thinking it was maybe my heart, but I think it was just the anxiety going on. So one of the benefits of, of starting that beta blocker was it, it relieved a lot of that. Now, 
you know, those are those are both a few things I didn't necessarily know to anticipate. So those were um, both pretty tough mentally in the recovery process because again, I was feeling so good, uh, and then I started having these issues and um, you know I had anxiety with it. And then once we figured out what it was, and I was put on a beta blocker, which seemed to to calm down the issue with the VTAC. I started having some some pain in my chest, and and honestly, still fight some of that anxiety. Um, even even this week, I've had a little bit of it, but it's it's much less. Um, and, and I think a lot of that is just the mental part of it that I didn't necessarily know, and, and maybe I wasn't prepared for, maybe I was, um, but that's been a challenge and, and maybe a disappointment in the in the whole thing. Not at all so much that that I would ever say. I wish I wouldn't have done this. I'm I'm very happy I did this last year. Um, you know, everything looks great as far as uh, the way my heart's functioning. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, I'm back to exercising and, and doing everything. It's just uh, having that little bit of anxiety and, and those thoughts that are there. Um, that I've, I've worked through, worked through some counseling, um, but hopefully those will go away. Uh, and then even just the side effects of a beta blocker making me feel tired and not necessarily even having the energy I had, you know, two two months after I had the surgery um, is a little disappointing. But again, all those things considered, um, I'm very happy with where I'm at as far as that goes. So that's kind of a long way around to talk about it. Um, you know, a, a few other things just to, to you know, bring up is of course INR, uh, um, that's always the thing when you go to a mechanical valve, people always wondered about taking blood thinners and what that's like. And, and I'll tell you from my experience, once we figured out what my dosage was, um, it's been pretty well consistent. So basically for me, and this is everybody, everybody's completely different on this, um, which I find just so interesting, but um, I take warfarin, I take um, 12 and a half milligrams a day, um, and then three days a week, I take 15 milligrams, and that keeps my INR between my target from my cardiologist uh, is 1.8 to 2.5. With the valve, I could go 1.5 to 2, but he likes to keep me a little bit higher, uh, and really, I've been really around that 1.8 to 2 mark for the most part the entire time. Um, I, have, <clears throat> I haven't changed my diet at all. Um, I, I eat um, a lot of broccoli, a lot of Brussels sprouts, um, you know, I, I do smoothies with spinach, so I, I, I have a lot of vitamin K. Um, but then there's weeks when I have just junk food. Um, and, you know, maybe we're traveling or um, a kid's in a baseball tournament or something like that. And so uh, my diet has not really been changed at all. And um, my NRs stayed pretty well across the board in that range and, and haven't had an issue. Um, now, I will go back in three days to get my, my check. At this point, I'm going once every five weeks. I don't do a home test. Um, for me, it's just as easy to go once every five weeks uh, to the clinic, and then all that's taken care of for me. Um, but but truly, um, I have not had an issue with the blood thinner at all. Um, there's a couple things that I'm just, the new normal that I get used to. Um, I did during my son's baseball season. I caught a baseball off the inside of my knee. Uh, and I had a bruise about that big uh, that lasted for a couple weeks, and I'm not somebody that ever bruised before. Uh, I had that, and I've had one bruise on my leg where I hit something. Otherwise, I haven't really bruised, and I think that's just maybe a little bit more of me personally, but didn't have that issue. As far as bleeding, uh, when I've cut myself and things like that, it, it does bleed more. It takes a little bit more time where I'm holding pressure on it. Um, I, I've noticed that basically if I, if I nick myself, um, I even have a nick on my finger right now. Um, I just go ahead and put a Band-Aid on. Used to, I, I would just hold it for you know, 30 seconds, but with blood thinner, I go ahead and put the Band-Aid on because it, it does tend to, you know, last a little bit longer as far as how the bleed goes. But uh, I've done a couple things. Um, I keep liquid bandage with me. Um, I, and I also, had, thankfully, I haven't had to use this, um, but I've got the, the bleed stop. Uh, I was recommended that too, in case you know a big enough cut, you can put that in, and it it, it helps to to clot up uh, faster there. But all that being said, overall, I haven't had any issues um, with warfarin and and with my INR, and I'm very thankful for that. 
Um, I do as a hobby, I, I do woodworking. And so I've, I've done that. I've built projects. I've worked with my table saw and all my other saws and um, just everything else in, in the shop and haven't had issues. I've gone through a baseball season um, where there's all sorts of stuff going on there. Again, getting hit, hit by baseball and all that. And nothing has really um, stood out to me as like, wow, this is, this is bad. So again, I, I'm very thankful. I, I am a-okay taking warfarin. You know, the biggest thing is I've got to take it every day, but I have a little pill container that has every day and I sort it out once a week. Um, and for the most part, I, I, don't, I haven't missed a, a dosage yet. I, I've been off an hour, a couple hours and that kind of thing, but, but no issues with that at all. Um, so again, very, very thankful for that. So while we're talking about that, you know, medication piece, um, at this point, um, so I went to my, uh, cardiologist for the one year checkup. It was, you know, really about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Um, and a couple of big takeaways there. We, we changed the beta blocker and I should have read what it was, but I was on the, uh, the metoprolol that you take twice a day. Um, but what I was having was with these crashes about two hours after I took it, I would feel flushed and I would feel, I would have some of that anxiety it was starting to come back or, um, at night I would take it and basically just, it would be like a sleeping pill. And so I told him about that. And so he switched me to the version that's the slow release that's once a day. Um, and in, in the three weeks to a month I've been taking that, it has been so much better. It, it's still, again, it's still not, I still feel the effects of the tiredness and the, maybe the lack of energy, um, but it's way better than the two a day for me. Um, I don't have that crash. I take that at night um, and it's it's keeping my um, my rhythm good and, and that kind of thing. But I take uh, that, my warfarin, uh, my amlodipine, uh, which I'm on for blood pressure. I take all those at night, uh, and then I take my aspirin in the morning. And that's just the regimen that the cardiologist has me on, and it seems to be working pretty well. Uh, a few other things about the um, the appointment I had. So again, he, he switched me to the uh, that beta blocker uh, with the slow release, which has really helped. Um, just overall my crashes. I don't I don't have that. I was having an issue before where I would take it and then I would have an hour commute to work and sometimes in the car I would just I'd start feeling flushed and I don't say dizzy but just a little bit spaced out and just really didn't like that feeling because mentally I was thinking well there's something wrong uh, when it was just the effects of the, the medicine but by taking this one at night now and it being the one time a day, it is slow release. It's been so much better. I haven't had those issues of, of crashes in the morning. Um, I will say I do still have some issues because of um, caffeine. Um, that was another thing I didn't really necessarily know going in. Uh, and forgive me again, I, I'm trying to keep it in order, but I'm, I'm all over the place. But um, caffeine, I didn't really think about that being an issue. Maybe I, did, I never read it or saw it after surgery uh, but I love coffee and prior to surgery I could drink coffee all day long fully caffeinated it didn't really bother me um, but since I've really since I've been on the beta blocker and 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 doing this I've really had to cut back because caffeine if I have too much coffee now I feel jittery and like um, just like I'm going to explode <laughs> to, to put the, the the way I feel, that's how it is. I'm very jittery. Never had this before. And so I've kind of figured out where I need to be. And I drink a little bit of a, a half calf in the morning. And that's all I have now. Um, because if I drink too much caffeine, again, I, I start feeling pretty off. And, and I, I sense that sometimes, like if I'm traveling, if I'm in a hotel, maybe it's a little bit stronger cup than I would have made at home. And I'll, I'll feel that. Um, but again, really didn't know to expect that uh, and and maybe I should so uh, maybe if you're watching and you're getting ready to do this know that caffeine could be something you have to to really monitor um, afterwards um, but again to me it's a better trade-off than the issues of, you know I was having or could be having if I didn't have the surgery uh, the other thing around that too is once I started taking the beta blocker when I was having these issues um, I also cut out alcohol completely not a heavy drinker, but a few beers a week, that kind of thing. And I cut that out completely. Um, 
because it, it was not making me feel great. And so when I went back for my um, appointment, there was a few things I really wanted to talk to him about because I, I wanted to say, okay, what what is what does the echo look like? You know, what is the plan for the beta blocker um, exercise wise? Because at that point, I'd still been capped at basically 153 um, beats per minute was where the cap was on exercise. So I had been exercising. I've been doing workouts with, you know, light weights. I, I haven't gone back to real heavy weights, but strength with light weights. I've been running, but I paid very close attention. And so when I would get to 150 beats per minute, I would slow down and start walking. So I might run, you know, if I would get on the treadmill for 30 minutes, I'd run two minutes and I'd walk for a couple minutes. I'd run two minutes and I'd walk for a couple minutes. And I'd gotten where I could kind of get up to about three minutes, four minutes um, and keep my heart rate down, but it was still capped. And so, you know, I wasn't really pushing it there. So I wanted to find out, hey, am I able to, to, to go back and resume activity and exercise fully or am I still on this cap? Um, and then also just questions around, you know, alcohol and, and that type of thing too. So uh, I had my conversation with him and he said, you know, after after looking at me and going through everything, he said, you know, at this point, let's, we'll lift the, the restrictions on exercise. Um, he said, you know, pay attention to how you feel. Don't do anything crazy. Um, and so since then, I, uh, even the next day after that appointment, I, I got on the treadmill because it was raining that morning uh, and I ran for 20 minutes straight and um, again that was a that was a push for me because I haven't done it in a while um, but it was great to kind of get past that that block that was there for me uh, and since then uh, you know my workouts I've picked up a little bit more on the strength training side still not very heavy weights um, because I, I still just want to be mindful of that um, but I've gone back to working out much harder um, this morning even I went out and ran uh, three miles I still well, I'm still building my stamina after not running for a while um, but I can you know run 15 minutes walk for a minute run 15 minutes walk for a minute type of thing um, and so that's getting more back to normal um, you know I, I asked about the alcohol and he said hey at, at this point you're probably fine again social don't do anything crazy and so um you know i've been able to have a couple drinks here and there um and and it's been fine so uh, i'm happy with that um just because again feels like night life is getting more back to normal um once i finished that appointment he he, he told me a couple things at that point uh, we went ahead and scheduled my echo for uh, the next week and he said, let's go ahead and put a monitor on you for another three days, just so that way you can wipe out. We can we can look at it and make sure all the rhythm stuff's in place, you know, to make you feel better uh, about everything. So I thought that was great. So when I wore the monitor, I did a few things on purpose. So that's why the next day I went and ran um, as much as I did, because I said, let me let me put myself to this stress there. Uh, also, the next day, I, the, the third day before I took it off, um, I worked out pretty hard on a strength exercise. Uh, the day in between, uh, my son had a um, was in a baseball tournament that was he played two games and we were outside in the 90 degree heat all day, so got to see how heat affected it. Um, I also had a beer for the first time in six months because I said, while I'm wearing this monitor, let's see all the things that that, that was just my mindset. Um, so I wore that, took it off, melted it back in, and um, then. The next week I went and had my um, my echo, uh, got the results back of the echo the next day. He said there's, there's no issues, there's no concern he has at all. There's uh, maybe a slight paravalvular leak, but um, nothing to be concerned about. It's stable from the year before, so not concerned at all. So that was great. That was a week after that appointment. And then another maybe three or four days later is when they got the results back of the, the halter monitor. Uh, they called immediately and said, you know, there's some, some PACs that are showing. There was a, one little bit of VTEC, but it, it was only like two or three beats. And so he said, there's, there's no concern there. Uh, all the rhythm stuff's in place. And again, that was with me pushing it a little bit harder um, over those days too. And so I felt very good about that and felt like, great. Now I can, mentally, I feel like I can get back to normal. Again, INR is in place. Uh, you know, Echo shows there's no issues. The monitor shows there's no issues. They've switched me to the new 
slow release beta blocker and that's taken away some of those crashes uh, I've been able to you know get back to my normal kind of social life and, and then also you know exercising kind of without limits and, and all that stuff has been great for me over the last month I'll tell you I still struggle with it sometimes uh, there's still some anxiety that pops up I mentioned earlier um, so again that that's a frustrating piece and that could have been just because of my experience that could have been whatever uh, I know I know of many people that don't have any of these issues and that's awesome and I hope if you're going through this you don't have those issues but if you do no you're not alone um, but again so now I'll go back in six months for my next checkup with a cardiologist and, and and everything at this point looks pretty good now there is one thing that um, I see pop up a lot on, on questions or even in the comments or on forums and that kind of thing and that's feeling your heart pounding uh, after surgery and and I can say absolutely yes I, I feel it um, cardiologist says it's completely normal but it can be disconcerting just depending on how you're feeling that day uh, but in the morning sometimes when I'm laying there I can feel it pounding um, or if, if I'm leaning to one side I can feel it in my chest and my neck um, and, and then along with the fact that having the mechanical valve you can hear the tick there are times sometimes I, I when it's pounding like that it'll sound like it's double clicking and so it makes it sound like there's something wrong rhythm wise i've talked to my cardiologist and he said there's, there's nothing there uh, yet sometimes you, you're hearing it weird you're, you're you're hearing and feeling different things um and this is for me and, and i know it is because sometimes i've had muscle spasms that i'm like wow my heart's really pounding and then i realize no it's just again it could be back to nerves coming back together or just muscle spasms um, but those are all things that are that I've kind of gotten used to now. Um, the sound itself, um, it, it's always a big question for somebody looking into the mechanical valve. Mine is very loud. I'm sure you can hear it the whole time um, I, I'm, I'm recording this. Um, you know, it, people, my family across the room hears it, and people at work can hear it. Um, there are days that I don't hear it at all because it's I'm so zoned out, and there are days that I do hear it. If I'm if I'm listening, I do. Um, but I've gotten so much, so used to it. There there are certain ways at, at at night when I'm trying to sleep that I may have to roll over a little bit different because it's a little bit quieter in one position. Um, and and that's again, that's that's my new normal. I think that I know people that have the same valve that you really can't even hear it. And so I think that's an all individualized thing too. Um, again, from my experience, I'm a loud ticker, but I'm able to, to kind of push it in the back and don't really pay attention to it that much. And it, it has never really caused me too many issues other than um, when I was having those bouts with anxiety really bad, I would really zone in on it. And I think all those things kind of pile on top of each other. Um, but since things have calmed down and I've been much more in routine, you know, it, it just really doesn't bother me. Um, you know, at times I've gotten to the fact where I just think it's kind of cool to have. Um, and you know, it's given me my, my, uh, my Halloween costume. So uh, this past year I was TikTok Croc from, uh, from, you know, Robin Hood, or not Robin Hood, uh, Peter Pan, Captain Hook. So TikTok Croc, and then I think I may venture into uh, rotating that with the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz as well, just to play into it because I, I might as well have fun with it, right? Um, that's really where I am. Um, and, you know, this, this video is rambling. If you've watched my other videos, you know I am completely amateur at this, but I just wanna share my experience to maybe help others um, going through this. Um, I think the big thing overall is I, I'm, I'm impatient. I, I really thought uh, and had my hopes and maybe my expectations put too much that, you know, six months after I had the surgery, I was gonna be back to normal, maybe better than I was. And here we are a year later and I'm still not back to normal. I'd say I'm 95% back to where I was. Um, I, I even think honestly some of the 5% is more due to the medication and the beta blocker than it is the surgery. Uh, and it, and then also just mentally and having to jump over those hurdles. I mean, I think that's been a big piece of my recovery um, that maybe I wasn't as prepared for as I thought. It's just the mental 
uh, grind of it and having complications didn't help that obviously. But I would say I'm 95%. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that soon I'll, I'll just wake up one morning and be like, wow, okay, I'm 100% back to where I was. And maybe that'll happen and maybe it won't. Um, but I've been able to get back and do everything that I have I did prior to the surgery that I continue to want to do. I'm not as going as hard exercising, but I'm, I'm still going hard. Uh, and at 40 years old, I'm very happy with where I am um, physically fit-wise and what I can, I'm able to do. I work out five, six days a week, either, you know, running or weights and that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, for the most part, I have the energy. I, I can tell when it's, it's the medication that pulls me down some, but I have the energy. And, you know, I still do all the yard work. Um, I've been able to to help coach my son's baseball team. And we basically played, you know, we were at practice every day, running around with the kids and um, going through that, being outside, being on vacation, traveling for work and, and doing meetings and having long days. I'm able to do all those things. And so if I stop and think about the days that aren't good um, or some of the stuff in the past that's happened or, you know, a day I don't feel great, um, I can get down pretty quickly and I can list off the, the quote bad things. But in all reality, I mean, things are going really well. You know, my, my heart function is great. Um, my ejection fractions, 61% is what it showed somewhere in that range, 60, 61. Heart function is very, very good. Um, there are things, benefits that I feel that maybe I didn't before, but, uh, you know, even running this morning, my legs are tired because I haven't been running, but I never really felt out of breath. And you can go back and watch. And I, that, that was one of the things that I was, I was feeling before the surgery. So like, that's great. And I think I can continue to build off of that. Um, I'm back to really not being limited on anything that I'm doing. Um, and, and honestly, a year later, um, you know, I, I'm still very happy with the choice. I mean, there were very hard things over the past year. Uh, and, you know, anytime any kind of open heart surgery is done, it, it's not an easy in and out operation and, and you feel great. I know there are people that do that and have no complications. But, you know, to be where I am today and feel like this and, and to know that I, I know it was the right decision to make. Um, and then that there are times I sit and I can I can listen to the valve and just know, like, wow, that, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And so I'm very thankful for all that. Um, I really appreciate everyone that watches these and, and, and puts in comments. I try to answer all the comments. Um, there are days I just I don't even pay attention to it. I'll go in and check and, and realize that I haven't really answered a question or a comment, but um, I'll go in and check those things uh, as much as I can. I really appreciate it. If, and if you want to share this with anybody, that's great. I have thought about one thing, and my wife's talked about this since we first got back and I started making these videos, but... Um, if people are interested, we can do this and sit and, and make a, um, a video with my wife to talk about maybe some of the questions that as a caregiver um, and some of the answers that she would, would say because she was so integral to my hospital stay and afterwards and has been through all of these things I just described with you. So uh, if that's something of interest, we can sit down and we can make that video so you can kind of hear her perspective because, you know, it doesn't just happen to the the person that's going through it, it happens to everyone that's around them, the support system. And so that may be something we do. As far as how many times I do these videos, I the way the reason I started watching or making these videos is because I watched a few other people that had these videos online. And those are all in my recommended channel um, videos. And I kind of felt like, wow, they they got me all what I needed to know and then it turned into a one year video and then a two year video, but there was nothing in between. And then as I started making these, I realized why that happens. One life gets busy and back to normal, but between my last video, which was around eight months and today, there's not much different that's changed. And so I don't know how many of these videos anybody would want to watch when I check in and say, okay, here's the 13 month video. And, Everything's the same as the 12-month video. That may be something that, that people want to see. If that's the case, I'll, I'll be glad to, to pop on and I can make those a lot shorter than this video. 
Um, but my plan is to continue to post these because I know me personally, every time I see somebody uh, in, in one of these groups I'm part of or a video that, that pops up at three years or pops up at 10 or 25 years post-surgery, those are just wonderful motivations and, and comforts for me to go through. So I, I'll continue to do that, um, but I won't be posting them every single every single month unless that's just people are begging for that, which I, I don't think anybody would. Um, but again, anytime it's something big happens, I'll pop in, make a video and let you know. But uh, as of now, again, one year and two days past surgery, it's, it's very surreal to look at. I, I know on Sunday when people would ask me about it, I, I can say this and, and I've talked to other people that feel the same way. It, it felt like a mix of it happened yesterday and it happened 10 years ago. Um, it seems like so long ago that it happened, but I can put myself right back in those situations and, and know what it felt like and know that, um, you know, a year ago today, I was in the, the cardiac step down unit making, you know, one or two walking laps around the wing um, and, and dealing with, you know, the pain that I was having and all that stuff. But then it also feels like it was, it was so long ago that it, it doesn't really matter. And so I think, I hope that's encouraging. Um, if you're if you're going through it early, here's what I'd say: is just you know, again, measure your your success by the week, not by the day. You're going to have bad days, but overall, you you'll probably see improvement. Um, yeah, I, I know I did. Um, as far as exercise, people have asked, "Hey, what what's the best type of exercise?" I I don't know. I'm not an expert. I would 100% recommend cardiac rehab for everybody doing this, so that way they can get that personalized piece. But, but really early on, walking. Walking was the best thing I did, and it was just 20 minutes in my cul-de-sac for the first you know, couple weeks when I was at home. Uh, and then I started walking more and more, and I got up to, I can go walk for an hour. Um, and that really was the best kind of thing for me recovery-wise. Um, but if you're going through it, uh, you know, just just keep going. Um, things get better. Um, some days are worse. Some days are better. But they get better overall. Uh, very happy with where I am. Um, and and like I said, I'll keep making videos when when big things happen. And I'll try to respond to comments. Um, but thank you, uh, everybody, for watching. I, I really appreciate it, um, and I really do hope these are helpful. I, I'm I'm glad to see that, that they have been to some people. Um, but that's it. That's my, my one year update. Um, you know, the, the only other thing is, I guess you can kind of see my scar here, uh, how that looks after one year and all the bumps across the breastbone from the wires. So me shut, which is still an interesting feeling some days, but, um, you know, everything's great. Um, I can't, I won't complain, um, because things, you know, anytime you have a major surgery like this, it could be, uh, it can go a lot of different directions and I, I'm, I'm very happy with where it is and, and you know, for the most part feel great. So again, thank you for watching. Um, I'll make another video at some point and uh, answer anything you have in the comments. Thanks everybody.